everyone, welcome to the final episode of 2021, and what a year it's been. Today we've got some scary stories from security guards who are also fans of the channel. Thanks so much for sharing those stories. Speaking of fans of the channel, just a couple of days ago I got a message from one of my amazing subscribers. His name's Robert, and he told me it was somebody's special birthday. So, hey Michelle. Your brother Robert told me that it was your birthday on January 1st. I just wanted to wish you a very special day and say I'm wishing you great health and an amazing new year. Thanks for being awesome. So friends, kick back, relax, and enjoy these true and chilling security guard stories. Take it away, me. Hey creepy fox, I got a story for you. This happened to me during the fall of 2005 and it takes place in Santa Ana, California. I was working as a security guard for some apartment complexes, and I had been minding my own business, eating my lunch, and just listening to the sound of the rain underneath the cover of my little golf cart. While chilling, I couldn't help but notice what sounds like people arguing. I figured that at first maybe it was just something like a dad yelling at their kid for doing something wrong, but when I started to listen closer, I could clearly hear what sounds like two adult males arguing. I remember trying to see if I could locate where the arguing was coming from, since it sounded pretty close, and sure enough I could see it down the little walkway, a short distance from where I was. Now normally we don't really get involved with people arguing, but when I could see them begin to push and shove, I knew at that moment I had to at least call it in. I do and then I decided to walk on over to see if I could maybe perhaps de-escalate the situation, you know, talk it out amongst adults, and try to find some sort of common ground. Little did I know what I was about to get myself into. Hey guys, calm down, what's going on? I said to both men as they continued to shove and argue. They continued to ignore me, as one of the men connects with a pretty mean right hook, knocking the other man to the floor. At this point I had to try and do something, as backup still hadn't arrived. Normally security guards aren't allowed to touch anyone, but if it's to defend yourself or someone else, you have to at least do something. Now that this guy was knocked down and things seemed to have settled, I figured that was going to be the end of it. However, what happens in the next moments as I'm standing just a mere feet from these men changes everything. The one on the floor who was now starting to get up exclaims he was going to, and I quote, kill him, saying that to the other man. These next moments felt like they went in slow motion, but it was really a matter of seconds. The one who had been knocked down takes out a handgun and fires a single shot in the other guy's general direction. He then suddenly takes off, disappearing behind one of the apartment buildings. I stood there frozen as I started thinking, I just bared witness to a cold-blooded murder. But here's the thing. I was surprised as I can still see the man who had been fired at still standing. But how? I mean, concern now was this man was going to need medical attention. But by some act of God, even though the shot did ring off at a decent close range, he hadn't been hit. Talk about a miracle. Thankfully, nobody else was hit by the stray bullet either. But that didn't mean that neither him or I were full of fear. We ended up being ushered into one of the apartment homes as police are called to locate the gunmen and my backup finally arrived. There was a huge manhunt that afternoon with helicopters being deployed and after roughly an hour I had overheard that they had caught the guy with the gun. Now as it turned out this wasn't just some random occurrence. The man who I spoke to who was fighting with the guy with the pistol told me that he was the boyfriend of one of his co-workers I guess he had thought he was trying to steal his girlfriend away from him, even though he claims he never did anything wrong. So then on that afternoon, he came to call him out. One thing led to another, and they got into that fight, which then led to the shot being fired. I won't lie when I say that being so close to danger like that, it's something that changes your life forever. Sure, you can continue to live your life and move on, but even after so many years, you can't help but remember the emotions and the actions that pretty much defined your future. Just imagine had he connected with the man, or just imagine he tried firing at me too. Very scary thoughts, 
for sure. A friend of mine introduced me to your Creepy Fox channel and told me I should take some time to write in one of my scary experiences so you can share it. I like that you do that. So here's my story for you. I work as a security guard at my local mall and do the typical stuff you see the guards at malls do. Basically, I'm just keeping a watch for shoplifters and people who might be causing problems. There was this one time some teenagers thought it'd be a good idea to skateboard inside the mall while wearing those hilarious full-body inflatable T-Rex costumes. Even though it was hilarious, I had to do my job and be the party pooper, telling them they had to leave. Trust me, it's not that I wanted to. It's just that I had to enforce the rules or I'd get in trouble myself. On an evening when there weren't a bunch of kids doing silly stuff, I was inside my car enjoying my 30 minute lunch break and listening to music, when I couldn't help but notice that there was somebody trying to open random car doors. Best description I can give you is it's a man in his early to mid 30s. He's roughly 6 foot, maybe 150 to 170 pounds. In comparison to me who's shorter, 5 foot 10, 200 pounds. The man looked disheveled, long greasy hair, some dirty old clothing on, and shoes that had the front parts of them missing. I knew this man wasn't the owner of any of these vehicles, so at this moment, even though I was on my brake, I get out of my vehicle and I approach the man in a very calm and understanding manner. Hey, were you looking for something there, buddy? I said to the extent, as the man begins to grow visibly agitated. No, I don't need your help. Leave me alone. He yelled back to me with hostility as I'm having to remind him he can't just go up to random vehicles and try to forcefully open the car doors, which was what he was trying to do. After another 10 to 15 seconds of telling him he needs to knock it off or I was going to have to call authorities, I see his facial expression change. Just the mentioning of the cops sends this man into a fit of rage. They aren't going to get here in time by the time I'm finished with you. He now says in a very threatening voice, as I stand there thinking to myself, Look dude, I'm just trying to do my job. How would you like it if some random man tries to break into your car? Clearly this guy wasn't all there in the head, so I once again told him he needs to stop, which now has him reaching into his pants pocket. He fiddled around with it for a few seconds as I slowly start to back away from him, and what he takes out has me realizing this guy's serious when he says he's going to cause harm. He's got a box cutter, and he now starts to curse at me, saying he was going to slash my neck for bothering him while he was out walking in the parking lot. Just imagine me in that moment, no sort of protection like a baton or taser, standing there in complete shock of this random crazy man who is now going on about slashing me with a box cutter. These next moments felt like an eternity, and I now start to tell this guy he needs to back up and drop the box cutter. He doesn't. He continues to walk forward to me ever so slowly. But luckily it's finally at this moment. A man and a woman were coming out of the mall, and they happen to notice what's taking place. I tell them to back away, since the guy has a little blade, but that didn't stop the man from coming over regardless. I had no idea in that moment. But it turned out that he was an off-duty police officer who was there with his wife doing shopping for their grandchildren. Basically what happens next is the off-duty police officer joins me in telling the man that he needs to drop the blade while his wife calls 911. As we awaited, the crazed man suddenly came charging in our direction and what this off-duty police officer does was so quick and clean that by the time I realized it was over, I finally was able to react. In one quick motion, he pushes me to the side to safety and then not only does he disarm this man, but he drops him to the floor and puts him into a submission hold. I grab the knife as the man continues to struggle with the police officer and he now says he was going to kill us and all these other crazy threats. Long story short, police got there, arrested him, and it was later revealed to me that the guy was on some serious hard narcotics. It was a very scary encounter for sure, and while it is a shame I had that happen to me, I'm thankful it didn't happen to someone else, like maybe a family who might have gone up to him. I'm also thankful for that off-duty police officer who came to back me up. 
He knew exactly how to handle his situation, and his training saved both his, his wife, and my life too. Being a security guard prepares you for some of the craziest things you can possibly think of. I was no different working as a security guard for a relatively small amusement park from 2007 to 2010. Sure, there were days when people were relatively calm, but then you had those more intense moments. Like this one time I had to tell a family they weren't allowed to sit in a certain area to watch one of our shows, and then the dad straight up socked me right in the face. I didn't have enough time to react, but luckily we were able to get him under control, and he had been kicked out. Those, even though a bit scary for some, doesn't even come close to what happened to me one night. I'm here today to share it, as I myself am a huge fan of hearing people share their stories, and I wanted to be part of it. Now, for reference, this didn't happen while I was at work, but it did happen as I was getting ready to head to work two or so hours before on an evening in 2009. I was 25 years old at the time, still living at home with my mom in your typical middle American neighborhood. I had just awoken after sleeping all day, and I head into the kitchen to make myself something to eat. On the table I saw a note from my mom, as she's old fashioned, saying that she had left me some leftovers from last night that I could warm up in the microwave so I didn't have to spend money. That was one of my many issues back then. I always spent money on food, instead of appreciating the food my mom made. Speaking of my mom, on that night she had gone out with my aunt to visit my grandma, who was in the hospital at that time. I had seen her earlier in that day, which explains why I didn't go. Besides, I had to go to work. Anyway, after I'd finished up my food, I returned to my room so I could go put on my security guard clothes but I couldn't find them. Quite annoying, but after pondering on where I'd placed them for a minute, I recalled I'd left them in the back seat of my car, which is safely stored inside of the garage that's in the backyard. So I head into my garage, which has to be opened manually, and once I open my car door and bend over to grab my clothes, I feel my cell phone start to vibrate. It was a call from my then-girlfriend, so I chose to sit down in the driver's seat talking to her for a few minutes before telling her I needed to get going and I needed to return back to my house. Now, just to give you a quick idea of the layout of the backyard, I promise I'm not going to spend five minutes talking about it, but basically where I had exited the house to get to my garage, you are unable to see the kitchen door. That's important because as I step back into my house and I begin to make my way into the hallway toward my mom's room, I saw a large figure in a trench coat suddenly disappear behind the door frame. Chills began to run down my spine as I start listing all the possibilities on who this could be. Surely my mom doesn't wear old trench coats. She's not exactly the tallest woman in the world either. And besides, it's not like I was expecting any company. Then it clicked in me. There are a couple of guns inside the house. One is in my room and one is in my mom's room. My main fear was that if this home intruder finds and gets a hold of them and catches me in the process of telling them to leave the house, I had a bad feeling I was not going to make it out in one piece. So what do I do? Well, I do the only smart thing. I chose not to confront this intruder and risk getting shot. Instead, I run out of my house, call 911, and advise them there's an intruder in my house as well as a couple of weapons. I was shocked by how many police officers arrived as I spent the next 15 minutes watching officers approach one of the windows and yell to whoever was in there to surrender. The person finally did get out, and I was shocked by who I saw. It was my then mom's crazy ex-boyfriend. It turned out that he had jumped over the backyard fence earlier in the day, and then he had been hiding behind our shed watching the house ever so carefully. Basically, he was waiting for my mom to get home to sneak in while she was there by herself, as he knew I worked in the evenings. But since he saw me exit the house toward the garage, he decided to take the opportunity to sneak in anyways. I just so happened to have caught him while he was entering my mom's room. The crazy bit was the police found a knife on him 
as well as a roll of duct tape and some rope. It doesn't really take much of an imagination to wonder what he had planned with that. He was rightfully placed under arrest, and after a bunch of legal and court stuff, and my poor mom having nightmares for weeks, we never saw nor heard from him again, and life slowly but surely returned to some normality. Oh, and in case you're wondering, my boss was very understanding on that night of the break-in. I was able to get somebody else to take over on the shift, so I could be with my mom. So this happened in March of 2014, after I'd gotten out of work. For context, I was a security guard at the Warfield Concert Hall in downtown San Francisco. I was actually pretty hungry after work, and I knew there was nothing at home, so that was going to be out of the question. I opted to get my usual combination of cheeseburger, french fries, and drink at my local fast food joint that's near my home. The thing is, when I arrived, the line was forming out of the parking lot. So weird, because on the contrary, when I looked through the front window, it was empty inside. I guess that's the thing with fast food. People are too lazy to even get out of their vehicles. But I shouldn't be one to speak. I was going to do the same thing. Tired and annoyed, and obviously hungry, I opted to park my vehicle and step inside to order. Those poor employees, I'll tell ya. The ones handling the drive through and the ones in the back cooking. That's one thing I'll give them props for. The ability to handle such stress from angry customers. Anyways, as I wait my order, a young lady, no older than 30 years old, comes up to me with quite a scared look across her face. Hey, what's going on? Is everything okay? I said in a compassionate voice. There's a man that's been following me for the last couple of blocks. I don't know him. Before she gets to say anything else, a homeless looking man comes into the store and then calls out to us saying, Oh, sorry about that. She's my daughter. We got into a bit of a fight. I hope she didn't give you any problems. One look at this woman, who was dressed up in business casual, and this guy, who was wearing a white tank top t-shirt with some stains on it, shorts with holes and sandals, told me that there was no relation between him and the woman. I ended up asking the man that if he was really her father, then what was her daughter's name? He just stood there for a few seconds, and then took a chance and said something generic, like a name like Christine. Not a match. Figures. So now I told the guy he needs to leave. I seriously thought that would have been enough, considering he had just made a fool of himself, but I guess he still had one last trick up his sleeve. And I, this woman and the employees inside the fast food restaurant were about to bear witness to this man's insanity. This man, in a matter of moments, unlike most of these stories where you hear them take out a knife, pulls out a taser of all things. He now starts to curse at me and says I was ruining his night of hunting. His words, by the way. Clearly this guy was trying to do harm, and when I heard the young lady gasp from fear, I knew I had to do something. So I instruct her to get behind the counter with the employees, and then I tell them to call 911. I'm now blocking this creep and acting as intimidating as I can, saying that if he came any closer, there would be problems for him. Well, thank the Lord that after some more threats, anger directed at me and at the woman, he just seemingly flips a switch in his head and just walks out of the restaurant without saying another word. Not gonna lie, but my adrenaline wouldn't stop pumping. It got so bad that I determined I was desperately trying to fight off a panic attack. I mean, it's not every day somebody takes out a taser and then says they were going to tase you with it. Unfortunately, I never did find out whether or not the police found him, as all that happened was that I and everybody inside got our statements and descriptions written down in paper format, and I finally went home. I don't know where that woman is today, but I really hope she's never had to deal with creeps like that again. Please, to anybody listening out there, if your idea is to stalk someone, don't do it. You don't realize the kind of stress it puts that person into. If they aren't interested, move on with your life. Don't grow obsessed, please. It's common sense. And 
common decency. In the early 2000s, I worked as a security guard for a place called Camelot. It was a mix of miniature golf, arcade, and pizzeria. It got quite lively on the weekends, and I remember all the nights I worked there, hearing laughter from the children, adults talking and having a good time with their drinks, and just a positive atmosphere that made working there quite entertaining. Hearing of bad things happening was never really common, and out of all the shifts I had there, I can only think of one that really stood out from the rest. It really goes to show you that all it takes is just one person to cause a scene. So, as I mentioned, it was a busy weekend night and I was making my rounds through the arcade area, keeping an eye on the patrons. I ended up assisting a small child with her mom, who was asking me where the restrooms were. And after we got there, I ended up getting approached by one of the employees from the accompanying pizzeria. She begins to describe that there was a drunk man who was trying to jump over the front counter, and even at one point, he tried to kiss one of the female cashiers. No way was I going to let that happen. So I follow her, and we soon arrive to the pizzeria. Sure enough, there's the drunk man. He's about mid-40s, 5'11", roughly 180 pounds, and he's arguing with the manager. I called out to both of them, and suddenly the man, in his drunken rage, comes up to me, and without any sort of warning, pushes me back, and says... What are you going to do about it, Tubby? I was a bit overweight at the time. I'm not ashamed to admit it. But being called something so childish like that wasn't going to bother me. I asked him if he was trying to kiss someone and grab one of the employees. And to my surprise, he fully admits it and even brags about it too. And then he begins to rage even more. He then continues to push me as he says he was going to beat me up. Typical drunk guy talk. I didn't give in, which made him even more angry. By this point, some other patrons are coming over to try and get the man to calm down, as one employee has already said police were on the way. Now, so far, apart from just anger and pushing, not really anything crazy that I can't handle. And just when it seems he's about to be under control, since he does begin to walk away, he suddenly grabs a steel chair and then starts banging it on the floor like something you'd see in wrestling. You know what I mean? I'm now beginning to worry he's going to hit somebody with it, so I tell everybody to back away. Kids are screaming at this point from fear, and employees and patrons are standing at a distance, as it's just myself and two other adult males who decided to join me. Here's the thing. The man puts the chair down almost as soon as he had gotten it, but now when provoked, he comes charging at me, with his fists ready to connect with my face. Too bad for him, I had more training in self-defense, and I managed to drop his drunk butt to the ground without any problems. But luckily, with the help of those two I mentioned, we were able to keep him restrained until the police arrived. Long story short, he's kicked out, and everybody inside the pizzeria cheered and clapped for the drunk guy getting what he deserved, and things then settled. I was a bit on the edge for the rest of that night, but after I got home and slept, I was able to return to work the next evening, refreshed and ready to go. No other bizarre incidents happened like that during my employment there, and as far as I know, the man was barred from ever going there again. So that's the end of my submission. Maybe it's not the scariest thing in the world, but surely intense and something you would have had to have witnessed in person.